Hello again, I am Blonty. Now, those of you who keep an eye on my Google Plus and Twitter feeds will already know this, perhaps, but this arrived for me yesterday. This is the newest Olympus camera and the newest family member in the OMD lineup. It is the OMD EM10, and this is the camera that will be accompanying me on my trip to Japan, and I'll be using that trip to really put it through its paces and do my usual thing when new high-end cameras come through uh, my doors for review, and that is, you know, exhaustively review it and do a multi-part thing and we look at the hardware and the stills and the video all in separate videos so we get a really good look at it uh, but this morning I went out and about with it sort of shooting with it playing with it toying around with it to familiarize myself with it because frankly you'd have to be some sort of monumental idiot to get a new camera and then you know wheels up in the air off to a foreign country straight away with it without even playing with it first and setting it up how you like it and getting familiar with it and sort of learning your way around and building some muscle memory for the controls and setting up all the custom buttons the way you like them so once you hit the ground you can shoot it straight away away you go no fiddling no fuss no well, you get the point. But one of the big questions people have been asking since the announcement of this camera is it has three axis image stabilization as opposed to the highest rung, the EM1 in the OMD line, which has the five axis image stabilization, which is just astonishingly good, like bewilderingly good, like black magic good. This can't be done with technology. It's magic. Flat out, that's all there is to it, as far as I'm concerned. Now, this. Uh, occupies a, the lowest rung in the OMD lineup. This is the most accessible of the OMD cameras, and as such, it's got three axis image stabilization. I'll talk about the differences more in the full on review, but in this video, I just wanted to show you a couple of minutes of footage of this camera in use in video mode utilizing that three axis image stabilization so you can get a, a decent idea about it. Uh, it's also got some comparison with it on and off, and I've also uh, attached a, a legacy lens, 50 year old Soviet era Jupiter 11 lens to it as well at the end of the video to give it a real workout. Now, so that's enough waffling for me. I'll just show you the footage and uh, you can get sort of your first taste, your first preview of uh, what this thing is capable of. And everything you're seeing except for the Jupiter stuff is uh, shot with the new kit lens, which is this little pancake uh, thingy here. And if I can turn it on, you can watch it extend. Or do, No, I took the battery out to charge it. <laughs> well, it normally extends. But this is um, an amazingly good kit lens, actually, too. I'm not going to show you any stills or anything I took with it, but uh, um, if you go to my Twitter feed, I did post one on my Google Plus as well. I did post one with a crop in it if you're you know, curious and want a little more tease about it. But um, better than I thought it would be for a kit lens. And the camera itself, oh, I'm getting excited. Anyway, I promise to stop waffling. Now <laughs> look at the footage.